Good morning, everyone. My name is Father Kyle Tietz. Today, the Church celebrates the commemoration of the Faithful Departed, or All Souls Day. So we just had sort of a follow-up from yesterday, where we celebrated all saints, all those who enjoy the glory of heaven, the saints reigning eternally with God and interceding on behalf of us. But today, the Church turns our attention to those who are in need of our prayers, the faithful departed, those who have died but are still in need of prayers to reach their final goal of heaven. So today, the Church invites us to reflect on the souls in purgatory, those who have died but have not yet attained the glory of heaven. So to talk a little bit about purgatory. But first, I think if we think uh, to the funeral liturgy that the church celebrates, that a few funerals for some Hispanic families uh, recently, so I've been reflecting on this a little bit, but the funeral liturgy is sort of a beautiful way of going through the stages of death and grieving. Uh, the family gathers with the body, the casket's closed, the body's moved in, we pray in presence, hear the scriptures proclaimed, celebrate the Eucharist, have a final commendation, the body is moved and interred into the earth. Sort of a very beautiful process of working through the grieving, but also trusting in the hope of eternal life. And a lot of times we're praying for that hope of eternal life and it becomes very apparent, especially in the white colors, the symbol of the baptismal uh, garment, the pall now over the funeral casket, the uh, paschal candle. Um, but certainly, there's certainly hope. We hope in the resurrection and hope for eternal life. But today the church invites us to take maybe a little bit more somber look at the reality of death, to take a step back. And we see that even in the liturgy today, the church suggests for us purple to wear, more penitential color, or even black, a sort of more somber mood. And traditionally, 100% um, beeswax candles would be used today. They'd be a little more yellow, kind of more subdued in tone rather than bleached white, um, something a little bit more somber today, reminding us of the need to pray for those who have died, for those who are in purgatory. And one of the traditional prayers and the sequences uh, for today is called the Dies Irae, the Days of Wrath. And as a side note, uh, maybe I'll put it in the description, uh, a link to watch the D.H. Ray or listen to it, especially the rendition by Mozart and by Verdi. Um, pretty unbelievable piece, uh, really powerful to hear, especially in person. Side note number two, if you ever get a chance to go to a Requiem Mass, where they perhaps use like the Mozart's Requiem as the music and, and the liturgy, a very beautiful opportunity. So, side note's done. The Dies Irae sequence, though, begins like this. Dies Irae, Dies Ia, Salvet Seculum in Favula. The day of wrath, that day will dissolve the world in ashes. Sort of a, this is a scriptural, looking up something like Zephaniah or some, some Old Testament prophet, but a reminder that certainly we celebrate the hope of the resurrection, enjoying eternal life with heaven, but it reminds us of the nature of both sin and the final judgment. So today, brothers and sisters, we reflect on purgatory. We recognize that, all, that not all the souls that die are immediately destined for heaven. Um, some people are in need of purification. Um, and it is in that purification process where we come in. Our prayers are needed. For those who are in purgatory are purifying, just like we heard in one of the first readings for today, one of the options, that chastised for a little, they will soon enjoy the eternal heaven with God. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, so they're safe, they're secure, but they're not quite fully yet in the glory of heaven, like gold being refined in fire. They're being purified, sort of a perhaps painful process, but also full of hope and expectation because their destination is heaven. So today we pray for those who are in purgatory. Those in purgatory can't do anything for themselves. They're no longer here on earth. They're no longer able to merit anything for themselves. So they need our prayers. So what prayers, brothers and sisters, can we offer to the souls in purgatory? Well, for instance, one by St. Gertrude, the prayer for holy souls in purgatory. Eternal Father, I offer you the most precious blood of your divine Son, Jesus, in union with the masses said throughout the world today for all the holy souls in purgatory, for sinners everywhere, for sinners in the universal church, those in my own home and within my family. Amen. Certainly we have the prayer of the eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, a beautiful prayer to pray as well. And in fact, any time we go to Mass, we pray both in the petitions and in the Eucharistic prayer for those who have died. So even when we're at Mass, to place that intention even in our mind as the priest is praying to offer that, or to have a Mass offered for the, a person who has died, um, to pray at a cemetery, especially encouraged in the month of November here, or to uh, pursue an indulgence on behalf of a person who has died. And we'll have to bracket our discussion on indulgences for another time too. But many ways the church offers us to pray for those who have died, 
those who are in purgatory, to speed their process of purification so that they may enjoy the eternal rest of heaven. And certainly, brothers and sisters, we pray that when it is our time to pass from this earthly life, there will be those within our lives to pray for us as well, so that those faithful departed might all join one day the Lord in heaven. So to conclude, brothers and sisters, we pray this prayer of eternal rest. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. God bless all of you this holy day.